So yeah, sitting there, first club competition, first stable for club competition, sitting here on the very first tee right here. I was in the last group ready to go and I just watched every person, every single person, irrespective of handicap, hit driver down the first hole. But as you can see, you've got OB all the way down that right hand side. And I don't know how many people managed to find the fairway, let alone find their own ball, but it wasn't many people. I'm in the last group sitting there watching everyone thinking to myself, as a 16 handicapper, I get a shot on this hole. So why would I risk wasting that shot by hitting it out of bounds? Because if I score a five on this hole, a bogey, that's two points. And there's an old motor racing term that says, you can't win it at the beginning, you can lose it. That's kind of what I was thinking is, I'm pretty nervous, it's my first competition, I just want to get off, just want to get off and away. So I put my driver away, grabbed a mid iron and proceeded to nobble it straight off the first tee down the middle. Hit a shot down into the fairway, onto the green, two parted for a bogey, net par, two points. And I kind of played the rest of the round like that because suddenly instantly made sense to me that that's what I was there to do. I was there to play Stableford points golf. And it resulted in me shooting 14 over, two under handicap, 38 points, and actually winning the club competition. So this is what the first hole looks like. So you've got OB all the way down this right hand side. And you've got to get down past this tree here so you can have a look at the green and there's a little stream that you've got to get over to get onto the green. So everyone's trying to drive down past here somewhere to try and see the green and get there in two. Uh, which is why everyone kept slapping it into this poor farmer's field. So instead, I thinned one to about here. I then hit an acceptable shot down the fairway which trickled onto about here. I then played a shot across and onto the green. So one of the elements I didn't quite understand um, was when you are starting to play holes where you're laying up of what a real true layup is. So this is the shot I'm 100% trying to avoid. I'm just short of the green. I've got to get it up over a bunker, up in the air and stop it. So that's going to require a lot of loft and a lot of commitment because if that, the loft I've got in my hand I'm going to need to generate speed through the ball. My eyes and my brain and possibly my experience hasn't really got the confidence to allow my body to do that. Your body will only do what your brain allows it to and if your brain doesn't like this shot it's going to go nah you, no I don't like that and it's going to make you freeze and it's that freezing motion that jabby motion that makes you scull it, fat it and just hit bad shots from here. So you can practice this and get good at it, or you could just flat out avoid it with some more strategic ideas off the, off the tee. For this shot, I hate this shot. So I've played that pretty well, but I'm at the back of the green. I was the one in control of where these layouts were coming from. So it was far quicker and easier just to avoid it, not actually leave yourself that yardage in the first place. So that's why I refer to that as no man's land. I'm trying to avoid that, that no man's land, that kind of 50, 60, 70 yards from the green, because I'm trying to keep it to around 100 yards, because that's basically a full shot-ish, and I'll come to full shots in a minute, with my lowest lofted club. know how far you're comfortable hitting it off the tee from, then how far you're hit comfortable hitting it from the deck from, you can put those two numbers together and that should give you the comfortable range of holes that you can play. So let's just say, for argument's sake, my comfort range is 200 yards off the tee and my comfort range from the fairway is 150 yards. That means at 346, that falls perfectly into my comfort range. Okay, so I'm now going to try and hit my shot here around that 200 yard mark. 
Okay. Now all I need to do with this shot is assess where I don't want to be. So I've got a bunker to the far on the right and I've got a bit more room out to the left. Ignore the flag. My job isn't to try and get it close to the flag. My job is to get it on the green from this yardage. So I'm managing my expectations. Now I know what I don't want to do. I change my, my thought process into what I do want to do. Get a positive image. Seeing that shot with those practice wings and then set up and commit to it. You can clearly see that if I get up to roughly where my drive's going to land, somewhere around 250, I've got an adjacent fairway to the left and an adjacent fairway to the right, which means that, you know what, I've got plenty of room. So if I do push it out to the right, which is going to be, which is usually my miss, I can then just still um, look to play back onto the fairway again, leaving myself a good approach yardage and play it as a three shotter. So that's how I know I can hit driver on this hole because I can see there is plenty of room to get away with it. But if it means that after two good shots, you're still in your that, that no man's land, that's where your strategy completely goes out the window. And that's why we're making some poor decisions off the tee. Because there is no point wasting any of your free shots by hitting it OB. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not gonna try and smash it because the harder I try and hit it, actually the worse the result's gonna get. And we all know this, this is why we have Tea prop. This is why people suffer with tea phobia. They get on the tee and they want to smash it. Start thinking of accuracy, not distance. What's weird is the distance will come. So, let's see how we get on. Lesser spotted fairway ball with my driver. So this has given me a good shot now. I can actually not only get green side, I can almost, I can probably get onto the green from here. So therefore my attacking play with the added information that I had space and room out to the right has now played dividends because I'm now in a position to attack the green from it. So with these shots as well, I'm managing my expectations a bit. I'm seeing where the miss is because you know what, from this range, I am not that accurate. If I can get this green side or on the green, then I'm gonna be really chuffed. So because of that, I'm seeing where I the shot, where I, where I don't want it to go, and now I'm changing my focus to where I do want it to go. Make a few practice swings, seeing that shot. Try and feel it inside as well, feel that shot. And when you get that feeling, give it a go. Oh my god that's one of the worldies that is oh my god that's so this is one of the aspects i find actually when i'm doing these videos in front of the camera and i'm explaining what i'm doing it's really making me say it out loud and it's making me get such a vivid mental picture of what i'm trying to produce because i'm explaining it to you and because of that my brain knows what i want to do which therefore it will tell my body what i need it to do i can't it really is Pretty much that's it. Just need to see it and believe it, and have that experience that then you can draw from it. Right, so we're up to where my layup shot is. Let's see how we get on from here. This is about as confident I ever feel over a golf shot. So I'm gonna be going somewhere at the flag with that. So it's about understanding what you can do, once again, as I keep saying, and then play into your ability levels. Okay, do what you can do and just do it really well. 
At that point, once you reach that ceiling, that's when you want to start trying to add in the next stage. Where else could I improve my game from? And if that's something you're interested in working out how you can do that, I'm thinking of setting up a Patreon account offering a service like that. Is that something you guys might be interested in? Let me know down below. So my shot from just shy of 200 odd, okay, is finished at the back here. So I've got a pretty good shot at the hole. If I pan around, you can see where my shot from 100 landed. Average golfer, you're gonna be getting a shot on this hole. So, just trying to keep it as simple as we can, but once again, I can't say this enough. Just doing what you can do, which do it really well. humbling to hear the response that people are getting from from my ideas and my concepts and my videos um, but this is why I'm doing it I want to try and help you guys not waste the same amount of time that I did when I went through this I want to give you the real information that real golfers need but with all of this it does require you to leave your ego at home to actually find your base level and then progress from there in a in a nice trajectory rather than this I'm gonna fix this and it's gonna bring me straight down I'm sorry to say it doesn't really work like that. No skill you've ever learned has. It's learning what your strengths are and playing to those. Learning what your weaknesses are and then away from the course or in practice time, working on those. Which is why I say play within your abilities, practice out of them.